In this short video, we're going to talk about scales of measurement. So every occupation has a way of measuring um, what they're working with. If you are a cabinet builder, you have certain tools that you use, and one of the tools is your tape measure, and that's going to help you define how long and tall and deep a cabinet needs to be. Statisticians also use different ways of measuring the variables that they're working with. So we're going to talk about uh, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So let's first start off with the definitions for all of them. With nominal scales, these are any kind of variables that consist of a set of categories that just have a different name. When you think nominal, think name. So again, measurements on a nominal scale label and categorize observations, but they don't necessarily make any quantitative distinctions between those observations. So they're not going to rank anything or put them in different orders. Um, that's the next scale. So the next one is ordinal scale, and this consists of a set of categories that are organized in an ordered sequence. Measurements on ordinal scale rank observations in terms of size or um, magnitude, if you will. And the last two, um, sometimes they are put together. So some uh, software, one of the ones we use is SPSS, and that's a really popular software and statistics, they're going to call both ratio and interval scale. But they are different, and we'll talk about why they are different. But if you see it in, in textbooks, when you take your next stats class, uh, termed as, as scale, just know that they're talking about either ratio or interval um, data. So interval scales, this is any kind of variables that are definitely ordered, but they have the exact same size in between each one. So there's equal dif differences between the numbers on the scale that reflect back to the equal differences in the magnitude. And then the, the same thing with ratio, but the big difference with um, interval, zero point, so like the number zero is arbitrary. It doesn't really mean anything. And, and I'll give examples of what I'm talking about there. But ratio scale is the same exact thing as interval with the additional feature of this absolute zero point. And you can think absolute zero, right? So zero because they have a, a, an O with the end of ratio. Okay, so let's give some examples for each one of these. So with nominal, think names. So my name is Jennifer Moore. Your name might be John Rodriguez, right? And, and your name doesn't outname my name. It's just a different type of name. My sister's name is Stephanie. My uh, eldest son's name is Trenton, right? They're not better or worse or larger or smaller, they're just names. And so name is definitely a nominal variable. Um, the city you live in, right? I live in Mesa, Arizona. That doesn't out-city Tempe, Arizona. Um, Scottsdale isn't more or less of a, of a city than, um, than, than Paradise Valley, right? It's just, it's just a different type. Um, political affiliation, right? Um, Republican versus Democrat versus um, independent versus libertarian, right? Th these aren't more or less of political affiliation. They're just different affiliations. Uh, so when you think about uh, nominal scale, think names, think, think categories, right? I have blue eyes. You might have brown eyes or green eyes or hazel eyes. You don't out-eyeball me. You're just different color eyeballs. So um, think hair color, eye color, um, the color of shirt that you're wearing, right? The room number. I might be sitting in room number ASB 102. That's not more or less of a room than ASB 302, all right. Um, when uh, we're talking about rank, right, and then we're going to kind of go up to more ordinal scales, and this is where um, differences kind of come in, right? So this is like good, better, best, right? Um, this is warm outside, cool outside. This is um, employee of the month, right? This is small, medium, large extra large. So if I go into a store and I hold up a small t-shirt and I, and I look at it and I put it down on the table and I measure it and I take out a medium t-shirt, same as next door, I can tell the medium is larger than the small and also the large is larger than the medium, right? So it's in order now. So I can put them down in order. I can put the small shirt on my left and then right to the right of that. I can do the, the medium shirt and then the large shirt and the extra large shirt, maybe even um, double XL for shirts, right? So now we're talking about um, 
size, right? So this is um, like first, second, and third place, right? So if, if I run a race and I take third, and I tell all my coworkers, wow, I took third place at the marathon. They go, wow, wow, that's really awesome. And then I follow up and say, yeah, there was only three people competing in my age category. It feels a little bit different, right? So there is rank for order. But um, it, it just, so it's still um, set up by categories, but now we have some order to it. I can say it is um, pretty cool outside. Right now, when I say pretty cool, right? So it can be either um, cold outside, it can be cool, it can be warm, and it can be hot. Right. So I live in uh, Mesa, Arizona, so a suburb of, of Phoenix. Right. And um, if I say it's cool outside, I might be saying it is, you know, maybe sweater weather, kind of that kind of thing. But that doesn't really give me a lot of information, right? So I have um, a friend who lives in Alaska saying, I say it's cold outside. Now let's talk about interval data. Because interval data gives specifics, right? It gives it, um, more specif specificity to each one of the um, ratios or each one of the variables, right? So with interval data, so with ordinal data, if I'm saying it's cool outside, interval data is saying that it's 50 degrees outside. Right. See how that kind of gets a little more clear, if you will. So, with ordinal data, um, I can say it's it's cool outside. With interval data, I say it's 50 degrees outside. You know exactly what I'm talking about at that point. If I say it's warm outside, I literally might be talking about 95 degrees. Right. I live in a city where it gets, you know, 110, 115, no problem in June and July. So warm for me might be 95. Now, 95 degrees might be hot, sweltering hot for somebody that lives in North Dakota or Ontario, Canada, right? So with interval data, you're getting a lot more specific with your, um, with your variables, right? I am a, um, a, a short person, right? So I am a short woman. So with ordinal data, I can say I am short. With interval data, I say I am 5 foot 0 inches. See how with, with ordinal data, it does give me some idea of what we're talking about, but with interval data, it gets a lot more specific with what I'm talking about. Okay, the only difference between ratio data and interval data is a rule zero, okay? So we'll talk about like money, okay. Um, can I earn uh, $50,000 in a year? Okay, so we'll say $50,000 was my salary last year, okay? That's interval data because I really wouldn't work at a company that I could earn negative salary from, right? So ratio has a real or hard zero. Now, could I earn zero dollars that year? I could, but I can't really earn negative $50,000 or negative $20,000. Right? Now, your bank account is interval data, right? Because you can have $100 in your bank account. You can also have negative $100 in your bank account, right? Um, ratio is also grades, right? Can you earn an 87 on the first quiz? Sure. Can you earn a zero on the first quiz? Absolutely. If you don't show for the quiz, you don't do it, you get a zero. But can you earn a negative 13? degree or 13 percent on your first quiz no so ratio has that hard zero okay and and if you do speak French right so um, French for black is noir nominal ordinal interval ratio so the noir triangle is an easy way to remember what we're talking about here nominal right names categories ordinal think ordinal rank so order um, interval and ratio, same exact thing, really specific, but the big thing to remember with ratio is it has that hard or real zero.